And and just to follow up to follow up on what Bruce is sharing, at the last call I was incredibly frustrated with CenturyLink taking the position they were, um, really taking more of a regulatory, this is what it states in the tariff, and getting off track of what the intent of the call and really this group is. It's a users group. We're really focused on operational matters. We're focused on trying to understand the deployment, who's on first, how much equipment, when the equipment's coming in, et cetera. Hopefully it never gets to a level where we have to go back, look at language, bring in attorneys and start that debate. So the intent is really to to allow this group to discuss concerns openly and really be heard so we can track them, document them, and then get together and have those answers from CenturyLink. So I know I was frustrated. I don't know if others were, but um, hopefully this will be a better forum for all of us to share information. Well, and to follow up, Kimberly, I think that there was even frustration maybe on the CenturyLink side that Tim Goodwin kept kept talking because none of the the operations folks at CenturyLink were interjecting anything and he was he was giving us attorney speak and he eluded a few times to you know I've got other people on the phone that could could say something but they just didn't step up and and discuss the the topic at hand so we we're really trying to focus this more on on what Kimberly indicated, the, the operations rather than the regulatory part of it, where it, you know we'll go there if we have to, but we really want to work through the problems and and understand how we're moving forward. So does does anybody have um, any issue or suggest? Questions about the the format that we're suggesting of of a shorter call um, once a month with just the authority folks, uh, peace happen authority folks, and then followed up one week later uh, with uh, including CenturyLink to discuss the items. But our intention is from this pre meeting, uh, if any issues are brought up, we can present those to CenturyLink right away after after this pre-meeting and uh, let them get to work on those issues so they can possibly have some answers for us the following week. A very good idea. Yes, Chris, this is Paula and I think that is a very good idea. It gives the authority boards a little bit of time to discuss openly without, you know, maybe any reservations and then um, put a more collective thought together for the CenturyLink meeting. So I, I am in, definitely in favor of it. Bruce, can you hear me? This is Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. So one thing I might recommend is that we synthesize, you know, maybe just some bullet items out of these discussions to send to them prior to, to the meeting with them just so they're prepared to know what we're going to be looking for. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Bruce, this is Daryl, and I know I was part of those discussions with you and Kimberly about this when, when um, I, I don't know which of you came up with the idea, and I do think it's a great idea um, to continue doing the meetings this way. One question I do have is, um, are we are we going to actively restrict the calls to just PSAP and authority folks? We do have a couple of carrier people on the call today, uh, not from CenturyLink that I'm aware of, but I know we've got at least one from Viero and uh, one from NGA 911. Um, I, I think that's open for discussion. I, what, what does everybody think about that? This is Kimberly. My opinion is yes, this, this call should really be for the PSAPs and authorities. Nothing against those two carriers, um, but they're not in the same position we are with delivering this, receiving the service and delivering it to the communities and doing the deployment. So I would say that this really isn't a forum for them, but if they feel differently, I think it would be great to hear that. I guess this is Daryl. I think you know one thing we also talked about, Bruce, was the idea of having um, restricting discussion to the voting members or proxies, and then have a section on the agenda for discussion from other parties that wish to provide input. Yeah. And 
I, I think I'm not sure it makes sense to, to restrict them from being on the call since we're going to be posting the video anyway. Um, but we could kind of do something halfway like that where we're, we're letting them be on the call, but we're, we're restricting the discussion to uh, the voting members in, until the end of the call where we have a, a section where they can provide input. Well, I think, I guess my opinion is that that idea for that restriction and, and giving the voting members the, the time, all the time uh, they need in the meeting to speak and then giving non-voting members a time at, in the agenda where, where they can, uh, toward the end of the meeting, so they can respond to any uh, comments or, or questions that were made throughout the meeting um, during that time. My, my thought on that was more about the, 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 big, the, the longer uh, meeting with CenturyLink included, where this meeting, um, uh, I, still, I still think that's a pretty good idea, but I, I am curious if any members of this group would possibly have any, any um, issues or concerns with, with non-authority or PSAP folks being on this call speaking as freely as, as we're hoping to make this call. This is Monica, and I am with Viero. The, the reason that I would say it is beneficial for me, part of these discussions, hear them at least, I don't necessarily have input to them, is to just be familiar with what is, what is going on with the actual deployment. We have issues with, you know, CenturyLink's deployment of this that may affect our wireless ability to deliver those calls. But I'm happy to jump off if that's the consensus, and I will just join in when CenturyLink is part of this. Who who was the other carrier on the line, Daryl? Uh, NGA nine one one. They're a they're a next gen uh, provider. Okay. It's Shelly Gunther. And I guess this is Kimberly again. I guess with that concern on delivery and connectivity of the into the network and the delivery and handoff of calls, that I think is a great topic for the large scale group and and having the presentation now. Obviously, this is what we're talking about here on the subgroup meeting from the users is the deployment process. Who's on first? Who's going first? Has the equipment been ordered, et cetera? So um, I don't think that. That concern is going to be missed, especially if we restrict this group to just the PSAPs and authorities. I think we'll still be able to handle all of that in the larger group meeting next week. Okay. If that's a consensus, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. <laughs> Thank you, Monica. Just, I'll just join next week. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, this is Daryl. Can I offer a um, a suggestion, or maybe it's a question? So, if we're restricting it to voting members and proxies, can we also include officers so that I can be on the call? Otherwise, I will be dropping off as well. Oh yeah, I kind of think we need that. Okay, voting members, proxies, and officers. And how about the resource center? Oh yeah, they come. They come to us with a. a at, without a vote, but at, with a good perspective and have been heavily involved in this process. Does anybody object to the resource center being included as on these calls? I don't have a concern because what they are charged with is to then take the information and and share that information back to the PSAPs and authorities. They're trying to bridge that information in many authorities are relying on getting that information from the resource center. So I think they're almost, even though they're not listed as a proxy, they're somewhat here gathering information to allow a vote later on by that authority. They're right. an advocate for the authorities, especially the ones that are not here attending. So this is fine by, by me. This is Matt. No, I'm sorry. Yes. And sort of like me, they're also nonprofit. I'm sorry, Jeff, go ahead. Well, if you're going to record these, then are they going to be subject to a CORA request and therefore we lose the super secrecy? 
Well, uh, what we've been doing with the recordings is actually putting them on YouTube, so they're not secret. Um, I don't know if that's what this group thinks of that, if these pre-meetings should go on the YouTube channel or if they're only going to be available through a website. But if that's the case, then I'm sure they would be available through Quora. And I guess that's my point is, you know, if we're going to record these things, what's the point of excluding people if they're available anyways? Well, I, I think, Jeff, just from a big picture perspective, I'm definitely not advocating for anything to be super secret. I'm advocating for the group to feel comfortable sharing and having an open dialogue without having another competing, competitive interest jumping in there. Um, so, I mean, I think there's value on having just this group talk. I think there's also value having it available for those that couldn't attend to listen to it. Definitely not trying to keep it super secretive. Now, if we get into an item and we have a service quality delivery issue, we may need to go into an executive session, which is completely different. And then, mm -hmm. obviously, recording wouldn't be posted on YouTube and made available. So we would follow those rules. Just my opinion. No, I and I I 100% agree, Kimberly. And if I, I'd love to hear from anybody else if if they have a, um, a different opinion, for sure. So, not hearing anything else, I think for future agendas, I'll state that uh, the pre-meeting is uh, restricted to voting members, proxies, officers, and the resource center. Um, and but we will still post the uh, the meeting afterwards on YouTube. Is that the consensus? Sounds like it. unless there's unless there's an executive session, of course, like like Kimberly mentioned. It's Phil and Durango. I think it's a great idea, and uh, agree. This is Maria. I agree. This is Dini. I agree as well. Uh, this is Tom with Clear Creek, uh, Clear Creek, and I agree. This is Mo Craig, Buffett County. I agree. Scott Newman, City of Aurora, agrees. Mike Wallace, Box County, agrees. Hey, Daryl. Mm -hmm. Just a suggestion, maybe instead of having to go through everybody that agrees, oops, sorry, maybe um, we, you know, open it up and if anybody has a, another idea or does disagree, we would hear from them, but we could assume the silence. Uh, I, I think that's a good idea, Bruce. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to call for a vote. It just worked out that way. Does anybody have any other suggestions or does anybody disagree? Okay. I think we'll call that consensus. Sounds good. Um, so Daryl um, talked about just a, a bit, and I wanted to, to shore that up just a little bit, that we had discussed the idea that the meetings um, be uh, limited to hearing from, because we are such a large group, um, the, the folks speaking are those that are voting members or proxies um, for that meeting rather than uh, having it open to everybody on the call. It gets a fairly unruly uh, unless someone, unless a voting member has a, a specific question for a non-voting member. Um, and of course the, the bigger meeting, um, CenturyLink would also be part of the, the full conversation. But, but anybody that's not a voting member would be given a time toward the end of the agenda to make comments or ask a clarifying question about something that had taken place or, or bring up a new item um, that, that hasn't been presented before in the meeting. But we would like to put a little bit of framework around these meetings and make sure that they don't get too out of control with so many people uh, that are not voting members uh, having comments and questions. Bruce, I think that's great, and I think it's a good starting place for us. Obviously, as this group continues to meet and we're tackling tough items, we may have to change the structure, but I think it's a great foundation for us to work from. Yes. 
fans. Does anybody uh, have any concerns or other thoughts regarding that, the, the method to proceed with our meetings? Okay, I'm going to take the silence as, as agreement that, that's, that that will work moving forward. All right, so moving on to new business, does any authority have any, uh, anything to bring up regarding their transition and where they're at and, and contact with CenturyLink? Any issues whatsoever that we need to uh, bring to CenturyLink um, and give them a little bit of time to on before we have our call next week? Hey, Bruce, this is Scott Dooming. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, sir. So uh, just an observation, and I mean, this is a new process for them too, so I don't know if I'm going to say it's a criticism yet, because we'll see how it goes, but um, we did have a couple meetings with uh, CenturyLink, and it seems a little bit helter-skelter on how they are rolling it out. Um, you know, their big question that they are asked at first was how many concurrent sessions you had, which is basically, do you want to match the same number of as your camera lines that you already have. Um, but it just seemed a little bit disorganized to me because there were some things that they were asking us questions for that I thought, you know, it's kind of typical of the big carrier thing, right? The left hand not knowing what the right hand's doing. And um, again, I'm not saying it's necessarily a criticism if it, because we are one of the early sites to go live. So maybe they're helping to work through their process right now. But it seemed like they were really in a rush. So they already did one site visit with us, and now they're going to have to come back and do another site visit because in their uh, documentation, they forgot or didn't consider that we have a backup center with its own camera trunks. And so they're going to have to come back and do a second site walk with us to talk about the demarcation and how it's going to be extended, et cetera, et cetera, which, again, isn't a huge deal. But it just kind of doesn't give you that warm fuzzy that, all the factors are necessarily being considered you know what i mean right yeah i think that that's a great point scott and i think that criticism or not this is the perfect place to bring those things up so we can help them um be better navigate the process for the the next piece app so i think that that's one of the real benefits of this group is is learning from the early, early adopters and of course every every implementation is going to be unique in its own way, but, but things like this, I think, are important that, that we have an understanding and how, how we can guide them to improve their process. Well, and I don't think that they've communicated very well with West, for example, because our last call we had, uh, the last meeting we had was my staff, CenturyLink, and West all on the call together, or in a room together, I should say, and again, CenturyLink was unaware of the architecture that a lot is in between our two comm centers, primary and backup. And then um, there were some questions that CenturyLink had to ask West about how the equipment performed. And then West on the flip side was unaware of the um, equipment requirements on the CenturyLink side. And just the simplest thing of planning, are we going to get a separate standalone rack for this equipment or are we going to combine together? I mean, little things like that. So. It's not just the customer. I think that they haven't necessarily coordinated with the providers either. Okay. Okay. So just a couple of questions on this, and I think that's great feedback, Scott. And I know from our site walkthrough visit, we felt very concerned with who's this guy and what were you charged with and what are you trying to glean from this? And I felt like we were doing a PSAP cut just from a CPE cut. It, so it was really concerning to me because they were asking questions on the CPE side and it didn't fit what the scope of this project was. But um, just to back up a bit, do you have a date on when Aurora is going to cut? They haven't given us a formal date yet, but they said it's probably going to be early to mid-October is the tentative timeline they've given us. Okay, but they you wanted to go before 
You were going to go before Douglas County. From the last un call we had with them, I understood that Aurora is going to shift but be before October 1st. Yeah, so that was our understanding too, and we asked Wes that question, and he said that he thinks that Douglas County is going to be the week following us, so I think even the timeline for Douglas County has gotten laid out, and I don't know if that's, I didn't ask him, so I don't know if that's because of um, considerations on Douglas County side or if that's on the CenturyLink side. Okay. This is Jeannie from Douglas, and we haven't been told anything. And we've also had this, a similar experience where they went to Parker, one of our PSAPs, but they, for, I don't know if they forgot or what, but we have two other PSAPs and that was pointed out to them and they said, whoops, okay, we'll get on that. So again, that didn't give me a nice warm fuzzy either. Yeah, isn't that strange? I mean, you would think that they would know where their camera trunks are terminating today and you know, so that's one problem. But then on the other, as an example of the disconnect, when we were meeting with the group, uh, it was the first time that the West staff heard how any alley is going to be delivered over the set trunks as well. And so it wasn't going to be a problem. We've got the equipment for it, but it's a consideration for planning, you know, and it just feels like they're really rushing it and not putting together a good cohesive plan of how they're going to do it. And I agree. Uh, I, I feel like that's what's missing is a project plan. And if David White from CenturyLink is the project manager, he got on one call with us, and I know he was on our call last the last meeting we had with the user group as well. But I feel like a, from a project management, a project manager perspective, his involvement would be almost daily because of the scope and size of this, and we would be hearing a lot from him. Was he out there, Scott, doing a walkthrough or involved in any of this with your PSAP? So I have not had any contact with him whatsoever, and one of my techs, Rob, is on the call. Rob, I don't know, if did, did David White, the project manager, reach out to you at all, or has it all just been from what I forwarded you from Wes? Rob might be on mute. You, Rob, you have to star six to unmute yourself. Well, I'll follow up with him, Kim, and find out. But I personally have not had any contact. I guess you're Rob. My... Oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, Rob, did, what uh, was that question again? Did uh, David White, the project manager from CenturyLink, has he had any contact with you at all? Uh. <clears throat> David White, no, it's mostly I think been Wes Horn. It's just a few little conversations there, you know. And we, the only thing we've really done is just like the site walk, just look at the, you know, at the backup center and, and here. And we had to do it. We, we did the other one just yesterday for the AMC building. Yeah. So Kim, from our perspective, we haven't had any contact from the project management on the CenturyLink site at all. Well, and I, I think that's a reasonable request that this group can take to CenturyLink is getting a formal written project plan from CenturyLink and just being able to see and understand the organization of the project. They should have a skeleton project plan of how this is going to go, the layout, and then they should just be customizing that plan based on the uniqueness of your cut, your primary piece up, your backup piece up. So then you just fill in those basic details. But I don't think it's too much for us to expect that and ask that from CenturyLink. So based on your concern, Scott, that's what I would track and document here if you see Daryl's screen just with the uh, CTL didn't really account for that, but we need organization of the project. We need them. We need a project plan and more presence, more communication coming from the project manager. Yeah, would you I would agree. I agree 100%. And, you know, I mean, to your point, Kim, like let's say it was a standard project, right? Here's CenturyLink. We're going to reach out to you as the PSAP because you're going to be coming, going cut over here in the next couple months. Here's your packet. This is what we're proposing from an equipment perspective. This is a timeline. This is when we need to do site visits. This is what questions we need you to answer. This is how it's going to be rolled over. I mean, right now it's like just guessing because you know that documentation that you had, Kim, we still haven't seen anything like that here at Aurora at all. Right, and that documentation, and I think it's in Daryl's folder for everyone if you want to take a look at it, it's really like a CPE cut. It's not a solid project plan specific to an ESINET upgrade. Um, and so those pieces 
are lacking, even if you pull from what they gave us. Yep, yep, I agree. And then if we would go on to the second point that you were talking about your experience is just that coordination and communication between, I know you were saying West, but I just want to make sure you weren't saying West Horn. It was, it's in Trotto and CenturyLink. That's where you're really feeling like the gap is not knowing what each company is doing. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I should just start saying Entrado since they're changing their name back again. Um, well, we're, we're going to be confused <laughs> regardless. <laughs> but I just want to make sure I was tracking that correctly. And so I, I think that's a – I don't know how we fix that. We felt and are feeling the same way. Um, I don't even know if Entrado understands what CenturyLink is doing, and CenturyLink needs to know what Entrado is going to be doing. So I don't have a recommendation on how we solve this. So I look to the group going, what do we want to tell CenturyLink we need from them on this issue? Yeah, I think that that, to your point, Kim, that same packet of here's the technical diagram, because what I wanted, as I said, we need to resolve the architectural design diagram and design of the system. And we still couldn't get everybody in the room together at once, and so we still don't have a diagram. We verbally discussed it, but because of that, like I said, in, it, maybe it's not a big deal, but it was a little concerning to me where it was the first time in Toronto heard how any alley was going to be delivered with the SIP call. And I thought, well, that's kind of important to 911. So, any, I mean, they worked it out. They said, okay, well, that's not going to be a big deal. We can do it. But just the fact that they weren't even aware of how that was changing. Like maybe that packet that CenturyLink provides from their project management side needs to loop in the point of contact with, you know, the provider, in our case in Trotto, at the time they reach out to the PSAP so that there can be a joint call to talk through all that stuff. Well, we definitely would want CenturyLink to know what Entrado is going to be doing, and Entrado needs to know what CenturyLink is doing. And even though Centri it's all CenturyLink's responsibility being the BESP, that project document, what you recommended was a, a technical portion, network requirements, that coordination, that document should be developed between the two companies so they know what they're providing and what that looks like. Exactly. Um, yeah, so I think that's a good ask for them as well, and I tried to capture it on this document. I can clean it up later, but if anyone else has an, a recommendation on how to clean up the communication between the two. And then the other piece, and um, I'm tracking right now the, the tariff schedule of the PSAPs, and so just from what you said, Denny, is you haven't heard – Scott, you're indicating, well, we're going to go some point in October. We have Douglas, Littleton, Longmont, Adcom, Boulder, Sheriff, Boulder PD, Broomfield, Westminster, all going in October. Patty, did you get your Boulder PSAPs moved? She may be trying to get off mute, but... Yeah, I'm trying to, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, we got we're we're gonna move all four together. So it'll be in October. Okay, so they're gonna be they're still cutting in October though. Yes. Okay. We so don't have I a think, date other than that October. Okay. So and my my dates, the Littleton date in October has been vacated. We've moved it's, all six of my people to April twenty eighth. April twenty eighth, okay. And I do have uh, email confirmation from Wes Horn uh, indicating that they agreed to that. And I've moved all five of the Larimer PSAPs to January 7th. And so what this is telling me is we need to request a updated schedule. And Daryl, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is one item that they should be providing an updated schedule, and we should probably get that in front of at least filed in the tariff. So the order from the um, from the commission when they approved the settlement agreement um, stated in the order that CenturyLink should start providing updated schedules on, starting on September 1st. That doesn't mean we can't request one sooner than that, but they are required to put one in the proceeding itself uh, starting September 1st. Hey, this is Phil. I requested a transition from my PSAP to October from February so I could align with my other PSAPs in the region and I was denied. Um, 
and haven't been getting any, any other options. Um, who was it that vacated a date in October? Uh, Littleton vacated October, and I think Arapahoe Sheriff was November, early November. So, okay. so the dates that are vacated by Arapahoe County are um, Arapahoe County Sheriff, Glendale Police, Greenwood Village Police, Littleton Police, South Metro Fire, and we moved all of our date to the Inglewood date of April 28th. Okay, I'll bring that up, see if it makes a difference. I asked for alternative dates and haven't been given anything yet, so. Okay, yeah, well, and that's one of the benefits I saw of, of me moving to one date was, was vacating some other dates because they had indicated that we can't pick a date that's not, that someone has to open up a date to allow them to move you into that date. So that opened up five and Kimberly opened some, and so I think that that's going to should should end up being helpful. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'll uh, email that info to Wes and detail my request a little bit more. Perfect. And this is Daryl. If you, you know, if, if you and CenturyLink are unable to come to agreement on that, um, the tariff does state that you have the right to petition the commission. Um, if it comes down to that, let me know and I can help you figure out the, the process for doing that. I will. Thank you, Darrell. So I do think that we should ask for an updated schedule before September so we can talk about it next week on the call, at least what they know today. There may be some additional adjustments before they want to do a filing, but at least all these changes that we're trying to track today would be, would be good for us to know. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. All right, did we have any other authorities that have requested a uh, uh, date change that we can just capture? Okay. Let me get back to the agenda. All right, so are there any other topics? We don't really have um, much on the agenda for this first meeting. We want mostly wanted to discuss our, our new format, but uh, are there any uh, items uh, that have not yet been brought up that we need to present to the group so we can get them in front of CenturyLink before next week? Bruce, this is Daryl. This isn't really a CenturyLink item. I did have the PSAP online forum uh, as old business on the agenda. Um, if you want to, do you think it's appropriate to talk about now, or do you want to save that for the full meeting next week? No, I, I think we can. We may still do a, do a wrap up discussion next week, but yeah, absolutely. Sure. So I didn't make a lot of changes, but I, uh, based on the feedback, I made it so that it is not visible to the public. You have to be a member of the group to see the PSAP forum. Um, as someone mentioned earlier, that doesn't uh, protect it necessarily from Cora if it comes down to that, but it, it does mean that um, to see the full forum and to see all, all the, the uh, conversations in it, you would have to be a member. Um, if you come to this screen now and you're not signed in, so right now I'm signed in as myself, which obviously I have access to it, but if you come in and, it's, and you're not signed in, what you'd see on this screen is a message that is saying that the um, that the group is closed to the public, uh, but there would be a link to request access. So we can uh, vet people as they come in, make sure that they're actually working for a, one of the PSAPs, and that way it'll, it can be open to anybody from the PSAPs. They just have to request access. Um, and we can start actually by asking all of the PSAPs, who do you want to have access to this? They can send us a list of email addresses and we can add them directly. But if anybody after that wants to join, they would have to ask for, uh, ask for access. Um, and there'd be two ways to do it. You could come to this web page, which we could put a link to it directly on the uh, Resource Center website. And they would, once they sign in, they would be able to see all of the, the uh, message uh, format here. 
Um, otherwise, they can access it directly through Google Groups, and there's a link to do that here. So if they have any problems with this web page, they can go directly to Google Groups, and it would look like this. Um, it looks very similar, but it's through a, through a direct uh, page rather than embedded in another web page. Um, and actually, there's three ways to do it because they'll they'll also get any if they're a member of the group, they would also get all of the emails or all of the messages by email, just like a listserv. So they can use it as a listserv or they could use it as an online web form. Um, with those changes made, I wanted to see if anybody else had any thoughts about this or if, we're, if we think we're ready to roll it out to the PSAP so they can start um, sharing information about their transitions or asking questions or uh, anything else that, that might be of, uh, of interest. Daryl, I think it looks great. Uh, you know, we can always um, tweak it a little bit as time goes on if, if we need to do something. But and I apologize, I skipped that on the agenda. I misread that agenda item. I thought I was going. I thought that was uh, the topic I had been discussing. No problem. Well, not hearing anything, I'm going to go ahead and uh, work with um, Monica to get this on the Resource Center website, and I'll put a message out to the PSAPs asking them who they want to be members, and we'll get the membership started that way. And then in the future, if anybody wants to join, they can just request access. No, I think that's great. That's all I had, Bruce. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, any other uh, items uh, for open discussion that we need to uh, be aware of, whether or not it pertains to CenturyLink? Okay, great. Looks like we can give everybody 15 minutes of their day back. Thanks, everyone. And uh, if you haven't signed in, uh, the sign-in link is in your email. So please make sure to sign in so we have a record of everyone who was on the call. Thank you. Great. Thanks, all. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys.